I'm gonna start pounding up everything. <laughs> this is gonna... Uncle Roger like how this mother-in-law <laughs> just <laughs> leave. I like how grumpy his mother-in-law is. Uncle Roger grumpy too is my son-in-law <laughs> always making YouTube video in my backyard. <laughs> Hiya. Chef Brian Sal here, not your typical chef. And today we're gonna be doing something a little different. I'm gonna be re-reacting to a video, but with Uncle Roger's take. So today I'm reacting to Uncle Roger review, Mark Ween's Thai green curry. As you know, by this point, I've been kind of on this Thai green curry kick. You know, admittedly, it's a bit of a research project for me because I intend to to make my own Thai green curry video. And I was very curious to see Uncle Roger's take on Mark Ween's video, because again, I was kind of shocked at uh, how much different the technique was from what I was expecting. With that said, let's check this video out. Really quick though, I do wanna shout out my sous chef level patrons. Thank you so much for your support. What you guys contribute really does help. And for those of you who are watching who wants to help further, please consider becoming a patron by visiting the link in the description below. Like, subscribe, but more importantly, follow me on Instagram at Chef Brian Sal. And with that out of the way, let's react to some shit. The first step in making this recipe is to pound up the curry paste. And so we've got all the ingredients. Oh, that his mother-in-law, she just sitting there back to camera. Like she yeah. can't be bothered to be yeah. in video. <laughs> that was the first thing I noticed when I watched the video. I was like, who the hell is that? Is that the mother-in-law? Like she really like does, looks like she does not want to be there. This is proper Thai auntie. Always <laughs> grumpy. Not like nephew Mark. He's smiling all the time. The whole... Yeah. <laughs> That happiness and joy comes from Mark's western side. Intro, <laughs> he's smiling. Hi, yeah. My mother-in-law doesn't write down any recipes, but somehow she just knows all of the ingredients. Correct. We just enough. use feeling. Her head. First step is just to prepare all of the ingredients to pound. So the garlic. first step is to peel your garlic. Good. Next up for shallots. Shallots. Good. Thing. Use shallot. Onion for poor Next people. Up is. Um, galangal. Galangal for you, that correct. No ginger, okay? Jamie Oliver keeps using ginger for his freaking curries. Ginger and galangal, two completely yes. different things. Ginger yes. is white people version of galangal. <laughs> Cannot use for Thai cooking. Uh, I mention this every time galangal comes up, but it looks very similar to ginger, but it's got a completely different flavor profile. They are not the same product. It's got more of a citrusy floral notes with a lot of earthiness to it. Very wonderful ingredient. And next up, lemongrass. Yes. Lemongrass. This, good. Is, this is, this is kind of weird that I'm reacting to the same video twice, but this time I'm really paying attention to what un Uncle Roger's, you know, reacting to, I guess. So yeah, I I'm like, kind of like lost at what should I mention again or whatever. Anyway, just thought I'd mention that. And I feel awkward is what I'm saying. I feel awkward as fuck. Then next up, this is a kaffir lime. Correct, correct. I'm not gonna be using the juice of the lime, but only the peel. All ingredients correct so far. Cilantro roots. Coriander root, good. Oh, I can already really smell that kaffir lime peel. Don't just stand there and smell. Help your mother-in-law. <laughs> With that said, the mother-in-law makes him pound everything later. <laughs> We've got all the ingredients ready. It's now time to start pounding. You can kind of just Fuyo. throw in That is very nice pesto and mortar. You're putting everything and pounding it all together. It actually doesn't work so well to pound on a on a surface that bounces like a table, so it's actually best to take the take the mortar down to the ground and pound on the ground. Correct, Uncle Roger. Love pounding on ground also. <laughs> I said I'm watching this video to get Uncle Roger's take, and of course he has to put sexual innu innuendo in there. I mean, you know, obviously I'm the one being foolish if I don't expect that to happen. And so next, the garlic and the shallots. Mm. We're gonna pound Everything all of these ingredients in. first, and then after that, we'll be adding the green chilies. Usually, when you pound stuff in pestle and mortar, you want to start pounding from the hardest ingredient. In this case, it's the peppercorn. But this Thai auntie built like tank. She just pound everything at once. Don't give shit what you put first. In goes some salt. I'm gonna start pounding up everything. <laughs> ah! This is gonna... Uncle Roger like how this mother-in-law yeah, just yeah. leave. I like how grumpy his mother-in-law is. Uncle Roger grumpy too if my son-in-law always making YouTube video in my backyard. Hiya. Nephew Mark, get your own house. Get your own house. This is gonna... It's gonna take a while, 
but I'm gonna tell you that it is so worth it to make your own curry paste. You can already see difference between this video and Jamie Oliver video. See, no food processor anywhere and that dead chicken in bucket. <laughs> it is so worth it to make your own curry paste. You could buy green curry paste at the store that's already pre-pounded. Don't do that. Entirely. But when you make it yourself and you control the ingredients, it's absolutely incredible. Also, if you don't already have a stone mortar and pestle, you should invest in one because you need it for almost every Thai recipe. Correct. Pestle and mortar, very useful for Asian cooking. Maybe one day Uncle Roger will have pestle and mortar as much, so all the thirsty niece and nephew can pound oh. Uncle Roger. <laughs> it's one of the, the ultimate tools of Thai cooking. I've just been pounding for about five minutes and already you can see how the- Ah yeah, nephew Mark, you don't need to and, uh, show the Captain whole pounding the process. <laughs> that was definitely a part where I was like, wow, this is really going on for a while. Not nearly as bad as Kay's video, but with the garlic, but. <laughs> Skip forward a bit, hi yeah. It's already smelling incredibly fragrant. It's gonna be delicious. My mouth is already watering. <laughs> Dude, this guy's fucking face is just, it's like, you look up happy in the dictionary and this guy's fucking face will show up. But it's also got a little tinge of like Joker in there. I feel like he's gonna snap any second now. He's still smiling. What drug he on? <laughs> For the final product. Good chili. Very important ingredient in green curry. These are Thai bird's eye chilies, but they are green in color. That's what's gonna give your green curry the green color. See? See how many green chilies she mm -hmm. used? Remember, Jamie Oliver just used three, three chili. So in go all of the chilies. See, and whole chili go in. They don't remove seed first. also. Pound them up a bit. Not like Jamie Oliver. Go mm -hmm. so, flying. But Hi, uh, you want to show pounding, show better angle. Don't show your toe so close to the food, <laughs> it disgusts. The Listen, Southeast Asia, everybody be wearing flip-flops. Everybody, all right? Unless you work in the mall, which is the only air-conditioned place, everybody be wearing flip-flops. It's not Love Island. Nephew Jake not there to suck your toe. I like sucking toes. <laughs> oh, oof. I, I never understood that. I, I never got that. Just, ugh. ugh. Wait, so what? A cup of coffee. What are you doing? You might want to grab some coffee like me. No. Hiya. Why are you drinking coffee? You know, does Mark Weens ever blink? That, that That's like, there was something about him that like stuck out to me. Does he not blink? I don't think he blinks much. He's just like, his eyes are just like so on you. That's something I just noticed. Pound, pound tree stroke and you take break. Why so weak? So we, we, <laughs> Uncle Roger want to see you make curry, not make time for yourself. If you want to take break in middle of Weijo, don't need to show on camera. Hiya, Uncle Roger never make Weijo, and then suddenly in middle. <laughs> and then keep on pounding. <sighs> He's still pounding. Half this video is pounding, and Uncle Roger not even on Pornhub. <laughs> I'm not sorry, I'm dirty, children. I just got the approval. The curry paste is finally. Nice. Final step is to add the shrimp, the shrimp paste, paste, which looks like doo doo. Delicious, but looks like doo doo. And look at the difference between Mark's um, curry paste and Josh Wiseman's paste, where Josh's was really smooth. And you know, again, I think it was because of the grinding action going in the circular motion, as opposed to Mark here, where he stuck to the pounding action. Very different end product. You know, this looks much drier than Josh's. It could also be the ratio of ingredients, but I definitely think the grinding action in the circular motion will give you a very different end product. I love that sound at the end of making your curry paste. It's kind of- If that sound don't spark any memory, then I feel bad for your wife. Our next step Good. is to wash and clean the chicken. Fuyo, look at her chopping. She chopping chicken like chicken did something to her. What did chicken do to you? Did he wake you up too early or something? Maybe in her house, chicken is alarm clock. And only way to hit snooze button on chicken is to chop them up. 
she first chopped off the feet and the head. Okay, what? I'm gonna start this video again. I don't think the dude blinks. The chicken, and now she chopped it in. Don't say he doesn't that blink. Was... Did he blink? Did you guys see him blink once? He doesn't blink. It's so intense. It's. <laughs> I think he's smiling because he's terrified. Half, <laughs> and gonna clean it up. Fuyo, look at the chopping. The strength. It like this mother-in-law warning nephew Mark, if you cheat on my daughter, this what I gonna do to your p <laughs> Thai style chopping, very different from Chinese style chopping. When you go Chinese restaurant, eat Peking duck, the chopping so precision. But Thai chopping, you just whack. Okay, that's not true at all. I think Uncle Roger there's making a joke, but I had worked in a old school Chinese restaurant. Taking apart a Peking duck is very different from like, for example, chopping up roast pork or roast pig, or which are two different products, by the way, or soy sauce chicken or roast duck, which is different from Peking duck, by the way. Peking duck, you're looking to slice the meat with a piece of uh, with a piece of skin, ideally. So you're not actually taking any bone. You're not serving any bone. The the meat is all cut off the duck, and then the bones are taken back to the kitchen, and then they normally make a soup out of it. Whereas something like this, it's just straight up chopping, and the Chinese do the exact same way. Again, I think Uncle Roger was just making a joke. Clean, and I have just set up this. He doesn't blink. He blinked once towards the very end when he turned his head, but he doesn't blink much. I'm like obsessed about this now. It has nothing to do with the food. Gonna assemble all of the entire green curry with the coconut milk and the curry paste. I like how she has same haircut as Uncle Roger. <laughs> so first she's gonna boil that water. And then she said she's gonna put in the curry paste, the chicken and boil that for a while. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> he seemed a bit nervous when talking to his mother-in-law. <laughs> I'm not getting much out of Uncle Roger as far as like the culinary techniques and stuff, but I am having a fucking good time. And now I know why I always prefer to do the Uncle Roger version. You guys always like the Uncle Roger versions more if you take a look at the history of my videos. Again, I get it. My entire channel's built on the back of Uncle Roger. I thank you, Uncle Roger. You the man. It's really good, the curry paste. She'll use most okay. of- So this is where I wanted Uncle Roger's take on. And actually, I need to call up uh, my cousin who's from Thailand and, and get- But I don't think she cooks much Thai food. That's why I didn't really call her up on video. This is where it defers you know, it's very different from what, how I would have done it. How I would have done it is much more similar to how Uncle Roger did it in his video where you cook the coconut milk first, separate the fat from the milk solid, and then put in your paste and then your chicken and all that stuff. Uncle Roger mentioned in Joshua Wiseman's video, reaction video, that uh, this is more of a home style. I'm kind of glad I'm watching this again and, and, and kind of looking for things I may have missed. And now I have Uncle Roger's take on it. Granted, he's probably gonna make lots of sexual innuendos and jokes, but. Usually first step of Thai green curry is cooking coconut milk, but her method okay also. It more home cooked version. She start with cooking the paste. Flavor from Thai green curry usually come from the fat. So as long as she use fat from chicken later, it okay. Sure, yeah. I mean, I think it just comes down to this is a different preparation. I don't remember at exactly what stage they add in the coconut milk. It was definitely later, but what I'm taking from this is this is more of a home style Thai green curry. However, the paste is as authentic and awesome as you can possibly get. Green curry taste is boiling away. Mm, it smells you know your green curry could, if it looked like CBD oil. Incredible. Okay, cup. And now she's adding in all the, the chicken pieces. Good, good. To slice up some kaffir lime leaves. That's gonna add more fragrance to your green. By boiling chicken, she getting the fat out from chicken. So that good, mm, that where Jamie okay. Oliver fucked up. His green curry, no fat at all. He used light coconut milk and he didn't boil chicken to get the fat out. Where the flavor? Not that I disagree with Uncle Roger here. This is like the key point where like, now I kind of get it what he means by getting the fat out. So by boiling, 
you are able to render the fat out more efficiently, right? Because it's sitting in there and from basically from the outside in, you're gonna cook it and then it's gonna extract all this fat. Searing, yeah, on the pan first, sure, you're gonna render out some fat, but not as much as you would by boiling it out first. Where I, I kind of disagree with Uncle Roger that you can't, you don't render out as much fat doing it by searing it on the pan, but the main difference of searing it on the pan is that you're searing the meat and that's not what you're looking to get with a Thai green curry. Thai green curry, you do not have a seared protein in it. The protein is not seared. That is one of the qualities of an authentic Thai green curry is non-seared protein. By boiling it in here with the paste, it really allows, number one, Uncle, as Uncle Roger mentioned, you're able to render the fat, but it's also allowing that paste to really penetrate in deep into the meat as you cook it and the water reduces or evaporates out and concentrates the paste the flavors of the paste into the chicken. You just woke up from a nap. Oh. Ah, see? That's the face my <laughs> ex-wife Auntie Helen make when she I don't think he blinks either. <laughs> that Uncle Let's Roger, watch. successful YouTuber now. That bitch missing out. <laughs> Micah, I'm not gonna touch you because my he hands are... Blink. He doesn't blink either like his dad. <laughs> Probably have some curry paste. Hi, uh, even the wife look like she hate him. Are they okay? Should we check on them? They look kidnapped and hostage. <laughs> Fuck hashtag free Britney. We should have hashtag free Macqueen wife and kid. Still on them and some chilies. But I love you, little boy. But he doesn't blink. I love you, little boy. Let's go back to sleep. I love you too, Dad. Blink. And you can see all. What? What? I love you too, Dad. That line look like he. Tap it in himself. Nobody mouth move. I think they really kidnapped by Mark. <laughs> Imagine if your kidnapper kidnapped you and then start making Thai green curry. So a lot of the liquid has evaporated. Now in go the eggplant first. Thai eggplant, classic Thai green curry ingredient. Next up for the coconut cream. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do. I I mentioned that way early on when I first reviewed Mark Ween's video that I would do the paste first, saute it, then put in the coconut milk, break it. But I genuinely did just remember the steps wrong because again, I don't make this dish often. When I do make a curry, it's more of a Malaysian uh, style curry, which is similar, but still very different at the same time. Now I really do get it. They're boiling the paste, they're cooking it with the chicken, getting the chicken cooked, extracting the fat, but also concentrating the flavor of the paste by reducing the water out and then adding the coconut cream. I think they let it simmer a little bit like that. And then they added, I think it was chicken stock or maybe they don't. I think it was just a ton of coconut milk at that stage of the game. I only reacted to this video a few weeks ago and you can see like, I already forgot a lot of the steps. Um, Notice how she untie it. That is how we tie shit up to transport food in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. In Thailand, in Malaysia also. We tie it like this. Uncle Roger never see anyone tie thing like this anywhere else in the world. And then so many white people tourists. Yo, even, even in Korea, they'll serve you, and in Southeast Asia too, they'll serve you cocktails and bubble tea in bags as well. Very common. To Malaysia. I think in I think in China and Japan too. I don't remember seeing that. Oh, no, no, no. I do remember seeing drinks bagged in China when I lived there. Um, I don't, I haven't spent any significant time in Japan, so I can't speak for them. But anyway, bags, drinks, liquids, very common in Asia, East Asia, Southeast Asia. They don't know how to untie it. They make mess all over themselves. This knot is like the past. White people can't undo it. <laughs> Oh, and you can just see how creamy that is. Yeah, you can see a lot of the fat. I get it now. A lot of that fat came from the chicken. That mixture was pretty dry before she put it in, you know, so the water really did reduce, really coated the chicken, the eggplant and all that stuff. You can see a lot of uh, globules of fat, in, uh, of chicken fat in there. Okay, all right. Oh, and you can just see how creamy that is. Oh, that's full of delicious fat. And she's adding a, about a spoonful of salt. May my side not black up. My guy say. Okay, up. We're gonna bring. Uncle Roger don't agree with that. 
Uncle Roger like fish sauce? Yeah, I'm uh, right there with Uncle Roger on that part. Obviously, neither Uncle Roger, who's Malaysian, and Chef Brian Sao here, who's this Korean, Taiwanese, American-born mess, <laughs> can tell this auntie fucking, this Thai auntie fucking otherwise. Take what we say with a grain of salt. You add in the sweet basil. Mm -hmm. Yep, Good. towards the end. And then she added in the sliced uh, red spur chilies that we nice. up earlier. Jamie Oliver, notice, no mushroom and munch too. Yeah. <laughs> so you just boil for another minute or so, and we are just about ready to eat. Okay, oh, okay, so there was no additional water, no additional stock, so I, all right. So I get how this works. I understand it a lot better upon the second viewing. Very close, it's just slightly different in preparation to this fucking, this fucking guy and his eyes, and his just, <laughs> But there was no additional stock used to thin it down or anything like that. So it's just like, basically by the time they add in the coconut milk, they completely evaporated or mostly evaporated the water out of the paste. Time to feed hostage. <laughs> okay, the green curry recipe is done. Ying is gonna... This dude does not blink, man. Now, <laughs> Shout a bowl now. I don't know. You do should um, start a pot of rice about well, when you start to make the curry. Hiya, don't tell us now. Your curry already made. You got whole 15 minutes in this video to tell us to make rice <laughs> and you tell us now. Hiya, it's too late. This mug guy got time for coffee, for baby, <laughs> but didn't tell us to make rice. Now he forced all the hostage to eat the green curry just by itself. You gotta come, come just take a really close up look of this green curry. Just look at how thick that is. Okay, so listen, I'm gonna take a few things back. Now that I'm looking at it, now that I understand the dish better, yes, like, as far as the color goes on this Thai curry, it's not as brilliant green as Pai Lin's Thai curry. It's maybe not as greasy as um, Uncle Roger's Thai curry, but you know, it's, it's obviously authentic and it's obviously going to be absolutely delicious. Again, take what I say with a grain of salt. This for me right now, you guys are watching me going through a learning process and I don't mind admitting that. Very thick and rich. Thick and rich, that how Uncle Roger liked my woman. This green curry look really delicious. Just the vibe of this video, a bit weird. <laughs> yes, so I've also got a plate of rice. This is brown rice. Bro, I'm gonna bro. go in. <laughs> brown rice? <laughs> That's the mixed part of him eating the brown rice right there. <laughs> Hiya. Again, I am not gonna grade this video. And honestly, I don't, I, I feel like I shouldn't have really graded all the other Thai green curry videos because it was like this relearning process for me. So I think I know what I'm gonna do for my Thai green curry video. I had a lot of fun. I'm kind of glad I'm ending this Thai green curry series on Uncle Roger's reaction to Mark Wiens because it was, it was very insightful at the end of the day. What I do wanna leave everybody with is listen, when it comes to home cooking, Honestly, <laughs> not that it's gonna be good, but you can do whatever the fuck you want, okay? Don't listen to me, don't listen to Uncle Roger. The more important thing is if you want to learn, give your op yourself the opportunity to fail because through failure, you will learn how to do something better. Everyone sucked at everything at one point and they got good by continuing to fail until they learned how to get better. And that's simply what it is. Don't be afraid to cook at home and mess things up because you will get better if you try again. With that said, I'm Chef Brian Sow, not your typical chef, and I'll see you really soon.